I call Priyanka Radhakrishnan. Yeah. Koe, Madam Speaker. Kia ora. Um, it is an honour to take a call on the Families Commission Act repeal bill as someone who has been a social policy researcher before and a social worker as well. It is, however, slightly bittersweet as well, given that I have had a fair bit to do with the Families Commission and the Social Policy Evaluation and Research Unit, which is more popularly known as Superu, um, in, in some of my prior lives, I guess, before I came to this house. Um, when I was a new newbie researcher um, looking into the issue of forced marriage in New Zealand, um, it was the first piece of research into that area that was done in New Zealand, and the Families Commission was one of many entities that I approached for support um, in terms of the research work that I was doing. And I want to thank them for the support that they gave me and for the work that they've done over the years. Um, I want to take a moment as we, um, and actually before that I might just go into um, the purpose of this bill, which of course is to repeal the Families Commission Act 2003 and to disestablish the Families Commission. And given that we are discussing the disestablishment of something, um, an entity that has been going since 2004 and has contributed tremendously to the social policy research landscape in New Zealand, I think it's apt to take a moment just to thank the board, uh, the CE, and the su successive CEs over the years, and the staff who have worked at the Families Commission um, and now uh, Superu for the work that they've done, for the contribution, their contribution to evidence-based research in New Zealand, for their unwavering focus on improving the well-being of families and whānau uh, since their establishment back in 2004. Now, it is heartening to know that as a result of this bill, and this bill does have um, support from across the House, which is, which is great. And actually, at this point, I might bring in um, a point made by a member from the opposition benches, which is that it was started by um, the Honourable Anne Tolley. And just to recognise the work, I mean, it might be that we're supporting this because the disestablishment has gone too far, but I do want to just take a moment to acknowledge the work that has been gone in, that has been put into this bill, and also the process of disestablishment to date. Um, well, yes, but you know, we've, we've still got to acknowledge some of the work, that even if it was a little bit fluffy, as the member Kieran McAnulty puts it. But um, anyway, the work of Superu will not be lost, and that is incredibly important, because there is a huge amount of research, a large number of publications that I understand uh, will still be available. There have been online guidance materials and tools that have been produced by Superu that will continue to be available to those who really need it. Um, an example of that that has been um, uh, taken up a fair bit in the community and voluntary sector more specifically is the NGO capability guidance material and, uh, and tools. So let's just also, um, for those who might be watching um, you know, from home and so on and so forth, just go into a little bit about the functions of Superu and what happens to some of those functions if this bill um, were to go through to select committee. Uh, one piece of work that I want to highlight is the Family and Fano Status Report um, and related work that Superu has been uh, conducting or undertaking in that space over the years that will transfer to the Ministry of Social Development. And I understand also that former staff who have been working in that um, area of research have also transferred to the Ministry of Social Development, which is great from a continuity point of view. So what is the Family and Fano Status Report? It's a, a report that is published annually and measures how New Zealand families and whānau um, are faring across a wide range of well-being measures. Another study is the management or uh, another contract that has been undertaken by Superu has been the Growing Up in New Zealand uh, Longitudinal Study. Um, and the cohort for that, I was quite happy to notice, is, um, you know, is broadly generalizable in terms of ethnicity um, and socioeconomic status to contemporary New Zealand. And that's a nod 
to how the research has been undertaken by this entity, which is in keeping with the changing demographic, the changing face of New Zealand. The purpose of this particular study is to provide evidence about what shapes children's early development so that every child in New Zealand can have the best start in life. This was a study that was started in 2008 and will also be uh, transferred to the Ministry of Social Development. Now, another area that has been um, uh, that Superu has had oversight um, over is the Family Violence Clearinghouse. And having been an advocate in the space, being a family violence activist and a policy analyst in that space as well, the Family Violence Clearinghouse is um, is is a part of uh, Superu that I've had a lot to do with. Some amazing research reports that have been produced by the Clearinghouse that are still available online. So I just want to urge everyone to go back um, and have a look and have a read through of the research that's come out from Superu, because as I mentioned before, it's still available online and it's absolutely valuable work. Now, family violence has been a key priority of Superu since 2005. Um, and it's actually the Family Violence Clearinghouse has been known to be the national center of research and information on family and whānau violence. So I'm, I'm really pleased to note that and, and highlight that this work won't be lost, that the Clearinghouse contract won't be lost, but will in fact be transferred um, to the Ministry of Justice. Now, we all know that government policy absolutely has to be based on evidence, on sound, good, robust evidence, um, and Superu has demonstrated this time and again. One of the reasons that we have to, as um, members in this House, be cognizant of the fact that our policy must be evidence and research-based um, is, is partly because areas like social policy research, social policy um, and cult social and cultural problems, I guess, um, are, are often known as wicked policy problems. They're known as wicked because they're difficult or they're impossible to solve for a number of reasons. For one, it could be that there's incomplete or contradictory knowledge, the number of people and the opinions involved the fact that these policy issues pose a large economic burden on the country, and the interconnected nature of these, um, uh, these problems, these policy problems, really. For example, um, poverty, which is a social policy issue, is linked with education. Education is linked with nutrition. Nutrition, again, is linked to poverty um, and the economy. So it's like all these different social policy areas are interconnected in the way that if you make a change, a policy change in one space, it often has ramifications and implications for other policy spaces as well. So it's really important when it comes to issues like crime, which of course it's out, outside the ambit of the social policy space, but things like poverty, or if you're looking at um, social welfare, um, you've got to look at them in a way that it's cognizant with other um, policy areas as well. So, in a sense, taking it out of Superu, disestablishing this entity and mainstreaming the research is potentially a good way of looking at the interconnected nature of these different social policy areas. So, they're complex, they're hard to solve policy issues, and that's why they're called wicked problems, not, not because they're evil, and I just feel the need to point that out at this point. So, there's no real quick fix for any of these policy issues. But careful consideration is absolutely required. And that's what we're going to see with the disestablishment of this ent entity and the mainstreaming of the research areas. What we must absolutely highlight is that the work will not be lost. It will remain. It will just take place in a slightly different form. I also want to note that um, you know, the staff have been, uh, who've, who've worked, they've been close to, I think, 30-odd staff members employed by the entity, uh, and they've been given options to move on, um, some of them who've had responsibility in specific areas, to move on to the ministries that will now be overseeing these pieces of work. Um, so, Madam Speaker, I just want to say once again um, that I thank the Families Commission and Supru for the work that they've tirelessly been involved in, and it is um, my pleasure to commend this bill to the House. Thank you.